Okay, I'm gonna check on the stream health here. All right, and it looks like, uh, it looks like we're live. Everything's going. So I'm gonna pull up some reference here, get it up on the other screen. I can bring it over if you wanna see. This is uh, kind of what we're looking at here. And I'm just trying to get some inspiration for what we might do tonight. Um, might bring up that. Uh, might bring up that uh, that one painting we were working on a little while ago. Ooh, I like that. Okay. So I'm going to pull up Bridge. That looks like the one we're going to go with. And let me just, uh, over here, go to my folder for all of this. Let's see. Looks like this is the one we were working on. And there's a couple things I want to play with with this. Um, and, and then, of course, We'll maybe implement some of these ideas that would be kind of fun. So, all right, I'm gonna move that back over onto the second area monitor here, and we'll go from there. Let's see. One more thing I just want to check here, as far as the the stream itself. Let's see if we're going live on uh, Eric Elwell. On the channel because last time yeah see it's not showing up I don't understand why this is um, let's see it's unlisted maybe we make it public one two one two uh, English all that stuff we'll save that uh, we'll see how this goes Refresh. Okay. There it is. Show it live there. And. Let's see here. Show the controls. Copy that. My apologies for the. Uh, slowness here. I've got to just myself. I'm trying to get this streaming stuff figured out. I have no idea what I'm doing. And let's see if this will work. Okay. Cool. Uh, I wanted to add this to a uh, to another uh, source where people can uh, can view it. So I apologize for that delay. All right. Tonight we are going to get going on this painting again. Uh, I might need to come back and simplify some of this. This is something that, you know, as you, you build up the layer stack, I always kind of have to come back around, start condensing things, um, and just burning in some of the decisions that I had previously made. Um, so, I, you know, I like a little bit of what was going on here previously. So, this is kind of a review session when I um, when I jump into these uh, you know when I pull up an old painting and this is one that I started quite a while ago and I'm coming back to we we messed with this one what three weeks ago maybe um, made a few changes to it and then uh, sat on it for a little bit so I'm kind of coming uh, back and forth with this one and uh, I want to 
reevaluate some of the decisions that were previously made. Um, let's see if we can get the most out of it. So here I'm just, um, I've got a mask going over the, uh, this adjustment uh, that I had made previously. So we can kind of coming in and playing with some of those changes that I had previously made. Okay. I like the strength of, of these, uh, kind of the graphic nature of this in the foreground here. Um, compared to this uh, kind of tamed down version of it. Then I'm just going to zoom out for a little bit here. Uh, because I, I find that it, it's usually easier to deal with something as a thumbnail than, um, you know, full screen. But uh, for the sake of the viewer, we will... Get a little more of the screen going here. All right, so I'm going to come in and um, again with the mask, see if we can um, see if we can bring back some of what was working previously uh, without losing you know, some of the other decisions that we made here. Um, now that's not always possible, right? You you make decisions as you go with these things, and uh, sometimes those um, those are compositional decisions that are at odds that you can't um, justify the two things. You've got to make a choice one way or the other, and so here we're figuring out. What can we get away with in terms of uh, kind of mixing these two ideas before we break it? So to show those two again, so this is the original, this is what we had, and then uh, we brought in a bit here. So we changed the direction of this. Um, this river and we added in these these little marks in here try to give that a little bit of you know transparency as your you kind know, of transparency is not the right word you want to be able to see through uh, you know some of the foliage in here into the background That there was kind of this diagonal flow here. I want to kind of strengthen that a little bit. strong there this uh, kind of area this black right there I 
Okay. Zooming out to get a feel for what those changes um, did to the composition. And then we're going to keep on moving down. So if I zoom out here, let's get the whole thing in frame. There we go. And a few changes there. For the most part, I like those. Here we go. A little bit here. Okay, so one of the things that I wanted to try here was um, taking the uh, taking the the levels of the background and putting kind of a cap on it. And so I'll explain what I mean by that in just a second here. I might be getting a little bit ahead of myself and saying saying so. Okay, yeah, so what I mean is if I come up here, let's see, here's our, is there a temple ruin? So we kind of want to keep those um, in front. And then right here, do another layer, and we'll just call this the um, uh, value adjustment. And so what we're going to do with this is we're going to select kind of a middle gray. And I'm going to go more in, more in the blues here. Uh, maybe not directly. Well, when you get into this uh, blue area here and you go desaturated, it feels to me like it shifts almost to like a really nice, uh, just a hint of uh, purple in there, which I think that's just the way that we perceive it, you know, the, the uh, gray next to, uh, um, uh, the gray next to, um, you know, that more saturated blue. Hey, Will, uh, saw you in the chat there. Thanks for joining in tonight. Uh, I'm doing well. It's, uh, it's a, kind of a crazy week for me. I've got a couple things um, that I'm putting together. So, Fantastic Tanks is... Uh, I'm going to really change topics here. Uh, but Fantastic Tanks is uh, this um, intellectual property that I've been working on uh, for some time. And I think we're finally ready to do our site launch um, late this week or early next week. That's, that's the big idea. And um, that's really exciting uh, for me, um, but it's also a little... A little scary you know going live with it so um, but it's been a long time coming and uh, I'm really really excited for that to be coming together but that being said it's been really busy very very busy week okay let's see Ooh, I think I accidentally selected a different layer here okay so um, back to describing what I'm doing here in the background. I've got this value adjustment. And I can just set this to the blend mode to luminosity. So I'm going to keep all of my color back there. But I'm going to flatten the value uh, down to this, this range right here. And so if I hit uh, X, so that I select my background color. And I go a little, maybe a little lighter with this one. And... Uh, We'll still stay in that blue range there. And then I just come in and hit some of these other areas back here. So I'm pushing these farther back away from um, away from this uh, layer right here. And by layer, I, I'm meaning uh, 
you know, compositionally in the scene, not necessarily in the layer stack. Um, this is a, I guess you could conceptualize that as, you can just call that a shape, right? So this is a shape. And we're separating these shapes out and making them read in space. I should say, uh, Will, thanks for asking. It's uh, it's good to see someone in the chat. Uh, it's been pretty quiet the last few weeks, and it's kind of understandable. I do these on Wednesday nights, and <laughs> you get uh, like all those debates and that kind of stuff going on the same night, and uh, that's all good and fine. Um, but you know, I committed myself to um, to uh, keep this thing going so that. I don't lax, you know, uh, I, I don't um, get lazy on the, uh, on the painting side of things. I love painting, but um, like any other um, good thing in life, you can, uh, you can begin to ignore it by simply just always wanting it to be uh, natural, you know, like, well, I'll do it when I feel like it, and you, you don't always feel like it. Um, but if you get in there and do it, um, regardless of whether you feel like it or not, then uh, it's virtually virtually always rewarding. Um, very few times that it's not. Um, it doesn't pay dividends you know, right away. Right? So that being said, trying to keep this thing going despite uh, whatever whatever else is going on and um, that has been made it that, that has made it kind of quiet lately uh, but that's okay all right so with what I'm doing here these, these values are going to get flattened out um, and of course I can come back and lower the opacity of the layer um, to uh, to soften that effect um, but what I'm doing is I'm pushing these things uh, backwards in their perspe their perceived space in the scene and kind of setting up a hierarchy of there but it's interesting when you actually when you bring in this exercise and you see oh that is actually pretty dark back there and I hadn't realized how um, how much I was allowing that to be um, you know so low on the value scale um, and for any uh, non painters watching when, when I mentioned value basically that just means uh, lightness or darkness, right, um, on the canvas. So one thing I can do to clean this up a little bit is if I, you know, if I take this stroke up here, and you can see how that's going to like push out a lot of this, uh, a lot of these, um, you know, darker values in the foreground. Uh, if I come back in with my uh, layer options here, and we do this almost every time, uh, so. Uh, anyone who's watched along you know, for some time will know the drill. But basically, we're just going to uh, set up a blend if option here. So we'll go 
blend if the underlying layer is brighter than this here. So we'll go push that up. So if we had any dark uh, areas back there that we want to preserve, we can do so. And then we can hold Alt and move this over. And then this actually will blend from one, one area to the next. So we can preserve these up here and actually get them nice and crisp. Um, and then come back with our our value up here. You know, push this back and forth. All depends on what you want to do with it. Uh, in this case, you know, I started mentioning this as an example, but I'm not sure that I really want to make all that uh, so prominent up there on the edge of the canvas. So we're going to kind of Feather that back. Maybe add some more little vines and so forth. I think we need to have some of these uh, clearly, you know, leaving the frame. You know, they're not not all um, linear like that. So. Yeah. Let me come back to that and uh, knock the saturation out because that that saturated blue right there. Um, that is not uh, not being friendly to the edges of the canvas. We want that to kind of fade out or be kind of feathered out, so it's not uh, not so strong. Here. So again, we're building up this this hierarchy of where things uh, land in the painting or in the scene, and we can cut through some of these and kind of show this overlap down there, and that's going to start, you know, pushing and pulling things forward and back, and uh, we're going to use. Use that to our advantage to keep pushing this farther back. Now, uh, the reasoning for this, like the the my understanding of why you would see this effect. Uh, in reality, is that you have all this um, kind of atmosphere here, right? So you've got moisture in the air, and that moisture is going to pick up, you know, the light from the sky and kind of bounce it around, right? And so the farther away something is, the more of that moisture and light bounce is kind of happening. Um, and your darkest darks aren't going to come through uh, in these conditions, right? So something that's really dark, that's, you know, shadow back there, you know, up here we're seeing it as, you know, black. And partly, partly that's a, um, a phenomenon of your, uh, your eye changing, you know, you know, the aperture opening and closing and how your brain interprets that information. Excuse me, I'm eating uh, chocolate chips. It helps keep me happy. Um, right, so um, part of it is a, 
is how your eye perceives it, and part of it is what's actually happening in physical space there. You know, light is being uh, bounced around through um, all these little water particles in the air and so forth. And so in general, it's not necessarily going to lighten up your lightest stuff, but it's definitely going to lighten up the, uh, the dark areas back there. Now, under different conditions, under different lighting conditions, you would see something else going on. You know, if this were a night scene, for example, um, then, you know, you would have, um, you might have some of the same effect from, like, moonlight or something, if there's that much kind of moisture in the air, um, but you don't have the light from, you know, from the sun bouncing off these objects and towards the eye, towards the camera, um, to, uh, you know, to have the same effect. It would just it would be dark back there. So, some fun things to think about. That being said, I am not a scientist. So we're going to continue pushing these things back in the scene here. And again, for anybody just joining in, um, we're looking at just this uh, luminosity layer. So if I switch this to normal, this is what we're doing. And uh, if I, this is these are the areas that we've affected so far. And I can turn this on and off. I'll go back to luminosity. So we'll turn that off. Turn it back on. And we're, we are taming a lot of this. So if you look at this, you know, there's a lot of really vibrant, you know, color play going on here. Um, you know, the, the lights and darks. So of course, the saturation and the hue of what we're doing, we haven't changed yet. And we'll probably get to that. But um, we're just dealing with the, the value, the brightness. Excuse me. Um, and... In taming all of that and kind of bringing it into like kind of a kind of equalizing it, we're making this scene a little more, a little easier to follow, uh, a little easier to um, wrap your head around what's going on. And uh, we'll we'll kind of go back and forth with this quite a bit as we go. Um, but the point is we're. We're now kind of getting away from like the visual stimulus of just like, oh wow, there's so much going on, and you know it's all you know, bright colors and so forth, and that's I think that's a legitimate way to work, um, and I I do that a lot, and um, I'm looking to uh, step away from that a little bit, tame the image, and I know I keep using that word, but um, kind of bring things into this hierarchy where not everything has to be the most important thing all, you know, all at once. Um, you can kind of see um, one thing coming forward is, is important in the scene. And um, So to back up and kind of reiterate what I, what I mean with this, there's, there's a, uh, a way of looking at this uh, that I've heard called the like the one two three read, and that is that you have, um, you know, your hierarchy of what you want to see first. Like that's your number one, right? That's your um, biggest, most important thing. And, and I shouldn't say biggest. It doesn't necessarily have to be large on the canvas. It just has to be the the top priority in you know the first thing that your eye goes to, and the way to do that would be to have this really high contrast, um, you know, bright, um, uh, bright colors, bright, bright against dark, um, you know, a um, colors that are on the opposite side of the color wheel, you know, that sort of contrast. Um, 
and that's really going to draw the eye in. Uh, but then you want to have um, you know a two, a number two, and a number three on your list uh, where the eye goes to next. And there are different methods for leading the eye around. You know, uh, one, of course, being leading lines. If you've done any photography, you'll uh, you know you know about that. Um, but one of the other ideas with a one, two, three read is is in terms of um, scale. So there's a visual hierarchy um, that deals with contrast. Um, you know what's really kind of screaming at the viewer, like you know to look at to look at it. Um, but in terms of scale, you could look at your painting. You know this is why I always zoom out when I do these tiny thumbnail views. So this would be, in terms of scale, your your number one read. So you've got this section right here and this section right here. You know, they have this really uh, strong shape presence on the canvas. And then you've got this like window in the middle, right? And then even within your window, you've got, this is probably, um, that's probably number two, maybe yeah, it actually might be number one because it's you know it has so much um, saturation in it. This orange yellow area down here, and then you just get this big window here, um, and so that's like the first read of it. So if you were if you saw this painting from a hundred feet away, um, does does it entice you to come closer and look at it? Um, and then of course you know you're getting closer, and then you start to see these shapes. Okay, you got these ruins, and you got the you know this um, rope bridge, um, and then you go to your number three level, and that's your third level of detail where you've got you know little trees and um, things for you know the interested viewer to get in really close and um, and uh, just kind of enjoy these these tiny little moments in here, right? And so that's another way to conceptualize that. Um, you know that, that composition, um, uh, compositional choices, right? All right, I'm just uh, looking at the chat here. Uh, Snack R says, "Thanks for sharing your brushes on uh, ArtStation. I will buy the foliage brushes too. Awesome, thank you. Uh, I appreciate that and." Um, I think you will find them useful. You know, I, I don't, uh, I don't want to come off as uh, like saying that you know what I've made is the best or whatever. There are plenty of great brush packs out there, um, and if you're on a budget, there are definitely um, free ones to find as well. And uh, you know, I'm not going to dissuade anyone from doing that. Um, but I do. I definitely stand by the the brushes that I've made. Um, I only put out brushes that. I have, you know, custom tailored and use. Um, you know, I, I'm not really interested in just doing this bulk. Um, you know, just doing a ton of stuff. So, so I stand by them, and um, I think you'll, I think you'll find them useful. Uh, but yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks for checking those out. I do have another brush pack um, that I'm considering. Uh, I have a couple that, so I should just back up and say, you know, a while back I took my brushes that I have developed over over a long time and have been using, um, and I split them up into different categories. And I did like a general painting category um, for the 32 paint, painterly brushes. Um, and, uh, that I think was probably the most versatile set. Um, you know, you could you could get the most out of it without it being like a very specific use. Um, for example, the foliage set is a much more specific um, uh, intended use for it. And uh, I think I don't remember exactly how many subgroups I broke them out into, but something like four or five groups, um, you know, texture, foliage, 
uh, general painting. Um, I think there was a, a specialty, like um, I, I have these uh, brushes that just make cartoon eyeballs and they're like randomized and kind of goofy. And I, I've done some videos on those in the past if you, if you want to look those up. Um, so that's one that I would say like has a, has a very special use. And then I think the other category was wild, wild brushes. And those are ones that like, they're really interesting and fun to play with, but they're really un unpredictable and they give you, um, you know, strange results. Um, so they're hard to like really place in a category other than like, uh, maybe exploration, you know, like they kind of help with, um, getting ideas when you, when you feel like you're doing the same thing over and over and over, um, you know, some of those brushes kind of like do crazy unexpected things and that can help, um, you know, break the, break the funk. Um, though I definitely would not make that promise to anyone, uh, that, you know, these will, these will solve artist block. Like, nah, that's a, that's not a thing. Um, but, uh, anyway, I, I broke those brushes out into these different sets and, um, I've been deciding what to do with them, you know, how to, how to get them out there to people, um, and really what they're worth. Um, you know, some of the brushes, like the texture brushes, for example, um, I considered just throwing that out there as a, as a free set because there are. There are all kinds of like texture and splatter um, uh, brush sets out there that like uh, you know I don't want to add to the noise necessarily um, and and put mine in a, a category that I think is you know worthy of uh, somehow somehow more worthy than the others you know um, so I want to be a little careful about that. Just a little careful, not too, not too careful. All right. Okay, let me zoom out here, see what we're doing. See if we have properly tamed the beast here. Get these uh, areas, you know, clearly delineated. I do want to be careful, you know. I don't want to. I don't want to be too aggressive with this. Um, but if you know, if this is farther back in space, then these you know leaves here, like I, I don't want them to have the same value, uh, the same um, uh, brightness and uh, kind of visual importance as. Uh, is the thing behind it. I don't, I don't want those to you know, perfectly match up. Uh, which, you know, for some reason that's a tendency that that can happen, right? So, just want to be careful with that. It looks like some of this stuff might be in a layer up here. Maybe, oh, I see. It's actually in the, in how we set up that option to um, ignore certain values, so it's actually pushing back on some of these. I grab a, a darker color there. Bring this in. Maybe show this as like um, if this is like a heavily wooded area back there. Then it would have a shadow on the on the floor.
and keep this shadow layer going there. And bring that up. Alright, I don't want to go get too heavy handed with that. Maybe bring this area up in value a little bit. Grab some of this. Just real lightly come up with those. Deciding whether or not that's a uh, good idea to bring this up. You know, like, you know, I have this kind of fog, not fog, mist, I guess you'd call it, coming off the, off the water. Um, make that more prominent, or... Uh, have the shadow side of this rock face be more prominent. That's the... Is the question. I think it needs um, something to kind of lead the eye into there. So we use the lines. value up here and I think you know what we're really uh, doing with this, this bright you know this kind of white here I don't really want to go that bright um, but that's like our uh, you know mist coming off of these and we've got these like waterfalls coming down I want to make sure that I don't uh, that I, that I end up getting those in the right um, kind of value category. I don't want them to be so strong, and I also don't want them to be um, completely missed, right? They've got to be, viewers got to be able to see what's going on in the scene. Again, with the hierarchy, you know, what is most important here? So we want to show that this is this crazy world with these little waterfall things going on um, but that also uh, there's some habitation here right there's a uh, there's these ruins or I don't know if I'd quite call them ruins I haven't decided yet whether or not they would be you know functional you know still in use or whether they're you know antiquated Okay, Just stop to breathe for a minute here. Zoom in a little bit. See the difference in what we did. Now I do like a lot of the leading leading lines, you know. So like here, here, you know. So I don't want to lose those entirely. Um. One of the things we can do is we can, instead of luminosity, we can go to lighter color. And so that's just going to bring just the shadow shapes up. 
So if we compare a lighter color to luminosity, actually, I don't know. I don't know what I like more. I kind of think I like luminosity. I think we need some decisions there. Again, we, what we can do if we want to kind of um, tailor that is we can take our bright uh, brightness here and do our blend if right so you know, figure out what our range is and then we can play with how much effect we want that to have okay. now that would bring back you know all of the uh, the hue and saturation if we just do normal because we've been working with primarily grays there so, and put a luminosity let me zoom out here I think it might bring this area up um, we'll see if it'll work with us or not because we're because we set up that uh, blend if option. So we might need to do a new layer. Feather that in. Let me zoom out here. And I apologize for working this small. It doesn't help anybody see what's going on. Um, but what I am doing here is I'm just looking at this in terms of that, again, that first read on the uh, largest scale. So if you're looking at this from a distance, you know, how is it perceived? So... looking to get uh, a better initial read and obviously this should be done much earlier in the process but it's digital so we can get away with murder not literally don't uh, don't be spreading rumors okay. so let's zoom in here made a little bit of a mess there um, but on the on the grand scale of things um, I think that this may work a little bit better let me pull that back yeah I did like this um, you know this dark region here you know coming in at an angle, you know, like that's like a triangle and almost vignetting the corner of the, uh, you know, the painting. Um, and I think I need to pick up some of these uh, values and carry them on through. So if this is coming through this way, you know, it's coming through like this, right? And then we cut these on over top again. And on our um, uh, our object here, you know, this statue, I think we need to move where these are so that it doesn't fall tangent with that uh, with this line behind it, because these are starting to read as the same thing, and uh, we don't want that. Our options are either to move that up, or we could. Um, you know, we could actually move this back here so that it doesn't line up with the uh, with that statue. Yeah, move it 
down a little bit. Go darker with it here. And then maybe darker here as it goes up in the off the edge of the canvas. Now speaking of those uh, foliage brushes, this would be a great time to use them. So let's go um, to the spider foliage right here. So I think a really fun one for this would be uh, Manny's Pulminator. This is uh, a friend of mine recommended that I make this brush um, and I did it just to impress him. I'm being facetious there, if you didn't pick up on that. So the idea with this brush, I'll show you how it works over here. So it goes whatever direction you start, that's the direction of the, uh, of the kind of spines on that, uh, on this palm, right? So if I start going right to left, it's going to go like that, right? And so I can curve it like this right so typically with this one you start from the bottom going up to go up and then you can come back down all depends on the angle you want so it's actually it's I think it's a pretty versatile um, brush for that kind of um, that kind of work like if I wanted it let's see be a good spot for this Right there. I'm gonna do Control D so that I lose my selection there, and then oh, it looks like I nixed my colors. I had the other thing with this brush is that it will shift uh, the colors from your foreground and background colors, and then there's a separate brush uh, for the trunk, um, and then this one. Uh, similarly, has a uh, has some dynamics to it. So, the harder you press, the rougher it gets. Right? So, you can do your poem like have it nice and rough at the top there. I wonder if it's different going down. That might work. I don't know. But that gets a little too, uh, in my opinion, too, um, what's the word? You know that style of art that's like, it's just all uh, beaches and stuff like that. I don't know. Lots of artists get in trouble for doing that kind of stuff. I guess it's considered the low-hanging fruit or something like something to that effect, but I don't know. If your audience likes it, then what's wrong with that? That's kind of what art is for, is to be enjoyed. So, so I'm just going to grab some of these and delete them. I'm going to grab some greener value here and see if we can improve this at all. Nope, wrong brush. Uh, this one. Right? That is too bright, so we'll bring that down. And we're going to switch our colors here. Uh, maybe that wasn't so bad. A little brighter. A little more yellow in there. Switch it up. A 
Yeah, it becomes, it starts to become an element. I don't know if I like that. You know, it becomes a, um, it's just so much prominence on the screen, on the canvas. see that as I'm you know playing with it right now it's often say what I um, I often say what I should be doing rather than what I'm actually doing <laughs> so uh, let me give it one more gander yeah if I do that I think I need to do a little you know a few more and um, actually consider a little more how it uh, affects the scene but we'll jump back over to uh, um, these leaves are these are a nice one for just adding in some kind of randomized foliage here so let me grab this color and that color and oh Throw in some of these here. Control that value a little bit. Go to adjustment. Um, there's a different ways to do it. Um, I'll go to hue saturation and just bring down the lightness. Uh, hit it right there, and then maybe go levels, and then you can control where the floor is as far as how dark you want these things to go. And I don't want them to be. I don't want them to be black, so I'm going to bring them up in the scene a little bit there. Okay, so now we gotta figure out how we're addressing this down here. And I think I might um I might do a blend if on this to see you know what we can get away with, you know, in terms of preserving, you know, the textures and stuff that we've put in underneath. Uh while still hopefully hitting that mark on um on the uh, compositional changes. So I'll go there and then we'll go see up here. Switch over to uh, one of these guys. Well, this is really intended for pine trees, but we'll see how it works on this. It's not bad. This one too has a nice, um, so if you go up, if you do it backwards. So the intent I think was to go down and do these, these you know, pine shapes like that. Um, but if you go backwards with it and you give it pressure at the end, uh, then you can kind of have these be kind of flared out. Um, Kind of stalks with the with foliage on the end. Careful, Eric. Don't go too crazy. Yeah, calm down. Calm down. This is the uh, this is the curse with. Uh, I mean, I think it happens in digital and and traditional. Like when I'm working in oil, if there's something that seems like like oh this is fun this is that's got a cool effect you know then I'll just 
you're tempted to just um, do way too much of it, you know. Uh, so, you gotta temper your temper your excitement in these things. some of this brightness here. Might kind of close off how the, the river comes through here. Um, I close it off, I mean you know, you can pass these through all the way down, you know, into this lower area, but I think that we need these shapes to keep uh, diminishing. Um, so that they're not like this uniform. Uh, there's not, not a uniform uh, pattern going on there, that, but that they... Uh, less and less light is allowed to peek through um, as the foliage gets denser and denser in here. I was just looking at the chat, uh, he said, uh, smack it R, he said that uh, you need those brushes. Uh, you're referring to the, the foliage brushes uh, that I'm playing with right now? for a response on that, I'll just say, uh, I, I have enjoyed seeing what people do with them. Um, you know, I've had a few artists, you know, hit me up on uh, ArtStation or Instagram and say that they've been using them and, you know, that it's helped them out and, um, and some of their client work and stuff. And like, that, that stuff is really exciting. It's, it's exciting to see something, um, bless somebody else or like work for them in a way that you know it furthers their um their work and their career and their um you know their client base and all that stuff like um that's exciting it's exciting to see that uh, happen so um again I know, I know it sounds like I'm just plugging it and saying you know these are the best things in sliced bread um but uh, just on the creator side of things, like it's it's really cool to see what other people do with them and um, how it um, it can be enriching uh, enriching for someone else beyond um, you know what I originally intended it for for myself, you know. That being said, I want to make it clear that um, brushes, Photoshop brushes are not, um, they're not the game in town that, that uh, really ups your art game. Um, you know, you could, you could do a lot of this stuff, really any of this stuff, with um, a square brush or a hard round brush or something. Um, now, there are benefits to making the 
process you know more streamlined faster um, there's benefits to um, making it more enjoyable you get these kind of quick quick feedback type things that are uh, that makes it fun to explore and paint and, and not feel like you have to uh, meticulously you know work something into it but uh, all that to say they uh, their potential caps out at um, at uh, your ability to, to, to bring your imagination to life or, or to or to render um, your understanding of um, what it is that you're seeing and and how to um, how to accomplish what you want to see okay and so that's that's all in your head like that's all uh, well I guess it's not all in your head but it's partly um, it's partly mechanical um, you know muscle memory but um, I think it's mostly dedication to the craft and um, observation right um, so I would give that caveat you know that I'm I'm not selling brushes as like um, uh, the the be all end all for um, you know making interesting fun art you know it's uh, they can help they can help with the process uh, one of these days I want to do a video um, or a tutorial or something that explains the thinking behind how to make your own brushes because that's really essentially what what that's all about is you're making your own tools and um, there's something exciting about um, having a problem a design problem presented to you and then not just solving the problem but then analyzing how you can make a tool that will um, that will help you solve that problem in a um, concise uh, maybe systematic kind of way systematic is not necessary but um, uh, concise and controlled I would say that you understand you you begin to understand the, the problem that you're trying to solve and then you approach it in a way um, that your your tool kind of um, I hate to be so bold as to say you know it brings mastery over the problem but it's the solution it's the thing that that solves um, uh, that that issue and so I'll give an example of this um, when I was working on Realm of Empires uh, that's a um, it's a massive multiplayer online strategy medieval game um, a lot of diplomacy and that sort of thing castle building empire building type of thing anyway um, when I was working on that we had this large map um, and the game it was web based and so primarily um, these assets needed to be uh, chopped up in well not primarily they just had to be chopped up into these um, uh, two-dimensional cells that uh, would go into a grid um, you know there was a there was a format for how um, the game had to had to operate and so we had devised this uh, plan to uh, to make a map um, that was both simple and had a lot of variability to it um, uh, a lot of interesting things to look at and uh, the solution that we came up with was it was basically like a three had three layers to it um, there was a background layer that was just kind of these diagonal rocks and that that helped uh, well grass and diagonal rocks and that basically helped to break up uh, the linear shapes in the uh, um, that you would see all over the place and on the map um, 
and, and by linear, the, the reason for that is that, it, you know, again, it was a web-based game, so it was uh, everything was structured into a grid. Um, and the grid was um, kind of like a checkerboard, right? So in order to break that up, the background behind it was all diagonal. Now, um, the problem that needed to be solved was to have this kind of hand-painted look um, and the consistency of, like, style without making it uh, so cumbersome that we had to hand paint every map. Um, and so that's when I developed some of these these foliage brushes. Um, I don't think any of the ones that made it into the pack... Yeah, I think these are all, like... Uh, these two are predecessors from, from that. Uh, or not predecessors. Um, you know, Realm of Empire, the map was the predecessor to these brushes. So these came later as kind of a refined version of them. Um, but yeah, that was the idea. It was that um, we had these brushes that you could paint trees and they would always look like they were done in the same style, but there was a lot of variability to them, so they didn't... Um, they didn't uh, look like the same thing over and over. It wasn't like we were stamping, um, uh, stamping art uh, all over the place. And that was actually one of the solutions that we started with. Um, you know, we made a, a whole bunch of like palm trees and stuff, and then we, um, uh, you know, stamped them into different arrangements and stuff. And you tried to hide the repetition, but you know that was difficult to do. Um, and so the uh, the brushes were one one of the solutions to um, to that problem. And so anyway, that was a long explanation to say that that's um, that's kind of where they came from, uh, or at least uh, you know that that batch. But and that that is an example of how uh, in general um, I approach brushes. It's like you know, I've got a design problem that I have to solve. And how do I build a tool? You know, once I've solved the problem, how do I build a tool that, um, you know, basically conquers that problem? That's a really weird way to say it, but... Um, well, there it is. So... Some of those things were like, um, you know, rock patterns, um, water, you know, the eyeball brush that I was talking about earlier. That's, that's just to come up with these, like, goofy um, cartoon, uh, like, monsters and stuff, but without, like, without hitting the same designs all the time. You know, your, your muscle memory uh, is both a good thing and a bad thing. It's a, the muscle memory will give you... Um, it will give you results that you have learned work, that you have learned will be uh, effective. Uh, and yet if you want to break out and do something different, um, that can the muscle memory can be your enemy, where you just kind of end up with the same shapes and the same uh, kind of designs because uh, you're really just starting from the same places. So. Okay, let me zoom out here. See what we've got. I'm getting lost in the weeds. No pun intended. Alright, I might push some of this farther back up here. I like how that light's coming coming through. Um, but Actually, before I do that, I'm going to come in here with uh, my eraser and just erase out some of what I did there just a little bit to get it to break up that kind of contrived uh, nature. 
true if I was approaching that. Okay. So we have this value adjustment here. I guess we can use that again. I'll go to uh, I'll grab a different brush. You know, we were uh, working with like a softer. Uh, there's the eyeball brush, by the way. Um, we were working with a softer brush, but I'm going to try something that might be a little um, more aggressive. Zoom out on this. See what we've done. So that's what it was. That's where we ended up. Even before all that. So now I got a smudge brush here that I'm playing with a little bit. You can see how interesting it can be to stack some of these effects. Okay, let me zoom out here. We may end up undoing everything I just did there, but um, I wanted to give it a try to uh, see if we could break some of that up there. Change the you know the flow of this. Um, you know these mountains in the background here. So that definitely needs to be down back. Let me just grab this brush and we'll feather in some changes in there. Bring that back up there.
This is the quiet moment where I'm reevaluating whether or not that was a good idea or not. thing I think we could do here because this is so because this is light coming through here um, if it's backlighting any of those leaves those are going to pick up a lot of color um, so I'm going to play with that just a little bit here let me zoom out Shift this over to yellow as it goes closer to the source. Maybe shift it you know, to a deeper green back in here. And hit that yellow again over in this area. More yellow, less line. Maybe even a little, a little orangey in there. Let me zoom out and see what we've... See how we're destroying this. I just... Right. And then actually I'm going to go to like a blue, a darker blue. I'm going to feather that back in here. Maybe not quite that dark. So we're really kind of implying shadow and light. You know, the, the blue is going to be where we're just picking up light from, uh, you know, from the ambient sky color. And uh, our yellows are a little more direct light. And again, with uh, you know, color contrast here pushing those back and forth to just make it more visually appealing. So I should mention uh, this week, I, I talked about it earlier just a little bit, but I hadn't really uh, expounded on it. And I had mentioned it last week that um, this week is the uh, Eluxcon online uh, convention. Uh, normally this is as a convention that would be in person uh, in Reading, PA. Uh, illustration is the, you know, the heart of it. And... Um, this year, you know, due to all of the events that uh, we're dealing with, uh, it's it's entirely online at uh, ix-online.com, and that just opened up today. So if you're interested in uh, checking out a bunch of illustrators' work, uh, you know, I have a virtual booth there that you can check out um, and uh, this year uh, as as I did last uh, year as well uh, I'm mainly just um, talking about my um, uh, my work with Fantastic Tanks uh, which is my own uh, intellectual property that um, uh, that I'm putting out there uh, again, earlier I had mentioned that I'm uh, launching that website, and uh, the booth is entirely Fantastic Tank stuff. So that's uh, 2D illustrations, um, that's the 
uh, three-dimensional models, um, some painted models, uh, which uh, had a lot of fun doing those. Um, those are um, uh, they're 3D printed, and then um, I'll do some airbrushing on them, then hand brush like a accent color, um, and uh, we've also developed along with a, a friend of mine, uh, Tim Pascalis, uh, which you can check out his work at uh, it's Four Nation uh, Design uh, on Instagram. Um, and uh, anyway, he, he helped me uh, uh, develop a decal set, uh, and we've been doing a few more as well that that aren't uh, that aren't ready yet, but those decals will be. Um, Joining the joining the fray sooner than later. So um, yeah, so the uh, the artist series tanks are tanks that have been uh, crafted by um, uh, by the Fantastic Tanks uh, team, and uh, that's uh, primarily my work. There's a couple other guys on the team. There's Tim, Joel. Um, Joel's been helping um, quite a bit with uh, with the um, the base coats, like doing the the primer coats and that sort of thing of the tanks, um, and some of the three D printing work. Uh, and you can check out his personal work at uh, you know what is it now? It's um, Joello, so J O W E L L O. Uh, on Instagram, that is the uh, that's the Ugandan um, rendition of his name, uh, Joel. Uh, he lived there for uh, quite a portion of his life uh, before he moved to the states. Um, so you can check out his work there. Um, he's a, he's a part of the team. There's also Adam Barna, uh, who uh, has helped design uh, some of the tanks and has uh, prototyped some of the um, uh, some of the paint schemes, uh, like the Cherry Blossom and the Fun Tank. So if you if you check those out on um, the Luxcon website, you'll see those tanks there, um, those those renditions. And, uh, so Adam uh, concepted those uh, paint jobs. And uh, what else? Um, Christopher uh, Danner's been working with us on some stop motion stuff. We haven't gotten to show much of that. Um, but um, I, just, I really love Christopher's sense of humor. Uh, just uh, really funny, quirky, kind of cute um, humor that works well with the tanks, you know. Um, which is funny to say if you haven't seen you know, quirky, cute humor with tanks. Uh, but I mean, that's the whole point of Fantastic Tanks. So um, if you haven't seen it, you should you should check it out. Um, and uh, I know I'm gonna like be spacing out and miss somebody. I feel I feel bad. Like I'm pretty sure that's the whole team. <laughs> but uh, like I'm sure the video will end, will end and I'll be like, oh yeah, I forgot. You know, Steve or whatever. I always make up uh, people named Steve. So. All right. Let's see. Some of these in here. I don't know if I'm going too crazy with all that. I get talking and I'm, I stop thinking. I just do stuff, and I'm like, okay, was that a good idea? I don't know. I was too busy talking to think about it. You sly dog, you got me monologuing. Okay. I actually really do enjoy, you know, that part where your your brain kind of just turns off and you're just like 
you know, playing with, uh, it's virtual, you know, digital, but playing with paint on the canvas. Right? See if we can reference some of what's going on up here, um, you know, down in this area. And then what I mean is, you know, you've got this like this little brown um, or this ochre kind of color there going on, and I just want to uh, give your eye something to kind of bounce between those two. That like it's not. This isn't the only place where that exists, but then it actually gives you something to follow. Um, and of course you can exploit that um, if you want to have, if you want the eye to kind of follow a path here. Maybe we'll put some of that over here and that would help uh, reference. You see this, you see that, you see this. And of course, uh, you know, we don't want to be too contrived because if we, you know, try to force something to work, it's probably not going to. Uh, so consider that. but. Um, you can consider how you might get these things to um, to actually do some work, some compositional work for you. Um, okay. We never did get to the ruins, did we? This is just a typical, typical day at the Elwell Ranch. I don't actually own a ranch. Don't spread any rumors. Okay, let's get these. Get some of this green up here and knock some of that bright blue back. You know, I had mentioned that earlier and uh, just never actually got around to it. And so let's do it now. Yeah, some of these. You can see that really. Yeah, actually, it might not be coming through the video, but there's like a really intense, strong blue there that I, uh, I don't want to draw the, the viewer's eye um, you know, that close to the, the edge of the canvas there. So. Uh, knock those down. Make them less prominent. See what that would do. You, what are you doing, Eric? I lost your mind. Whatever. Sometimes you gotta get a little destructive with your work. See what happens. here. Alright, 
right, let's see. It's uh, 1143. Do we feel like... have it in us to do the ruins. I think it would be probably appropriate to at least uh, at least block something in. So let's do this again. Uh, temple 2 because we've already got already got some in there, right? So um, looking at my reference, it's got this interesting sandy kind of color and then it's got reds in it uh, so I'm going to grab some of those don't want to go too aggressive but I want to see what see what we uh, can do here so suppose we've got this temple thing I don't know, maybe a stack. You know, like it goes up here. And so we can get something like this. Um, hmm. We want to have a separate. Going on here. And maybe a bit of it popping out on the side. Is that? I don't know if that's too tall. Let me bring it down. There, and then uh, I'll grab some of this. I like that dark color there. So if it, if it comes up to this. This shape here. So, have we completely ruined the composition by doing this? Should it be squat? Should it be tall? Tall ruin or tall a tall temple would be kind of cool to have. Like you know, you have more space to do all these little doorways and stuff like that. Um, I do feel like this scene is a little squatter, you know, it's like a wide scene. And yeah, but I don't wanna don't wanna lose the don't wanna lose the uh, scale of what we're doing. some banging upstairs which can mean only one thing and that is that uh, there are some squirrels in the walls and my people have lost their minds I have a hunch that that's not where you thought that was going but uh, has been a regular occurrence lately as the squirrels are trying to find a, a place for the winter and there are many in this home who uh, object So uh, uh, it should be obvious that I'm kind of noodling around at this time. At this point, just kind of playing with 
you know, what this might, um, how this might uh, be interesting um, in terms of the transitions and um, in color here. I like these little orange bits, you know, like there's maybe some kind of, I don't know, these different shrines or portals or something that, um, you know, they've reserved these um, paints for up there, you know, or those, these colored stones for that, that portion. figure out you know once you do something like that the hard part is unseeing it you know you put it in there now that's like your conception of what that shape is and at this point we can be really loose like it doesn't have to uh, doesn't have to materialize as any of those um, any of those ideas Though I am trying to be a little bit symmetrical here, because uh, it seems to be, uh, you know, just a, a general theme in uh, religious architecture. I could be proven wrong there, but symmetry, there's something about it. We just, uh, we just love it. Can't get enough. to read with a shadow but it didn't really work or wasn't liking where it was headed they're employing in this war war against the squirrels up there but it sounds like they're just brushing a broom against the ceiling or something I don't know if anybody's got any advice getting squirrels out of your out of your house my wife would definitely appreciate that just throwing it out there Not quite to the point of putting a price on it, but uh, we gotta we gotta deal with this for for everyone's sanity. Oh well. My apologies if the. Uh, Squirrel Wars wasn't the uh, wasn't the content that you came for here today. I make no promises. Okay. 
Well, um, I think this is an okay block in. I'd like to, uh, well, I should zoom out and, and evaluate. Um, I'd like to come back at this with fresh eyes. And, uh, you can kind of go from there, you know. Um, and for whatever reason, this, pa this uh, painting has been much more patient than than others you know this, I, I don't I'm not so invested that um, it's got to be perfect I also don't feel like it's got to be done tonight I just something about this one I just uh, there's like a story that I'm aiming for you know and I just I want to tell that story and, uh, and and that's it you know and so keep exploring until it's closer and closer, you know. Uh, but right, yeah, that being said, I, I think I do want to maybe step back from this. We'll look at it again. And we'll see if there isn't something that becomes obvious to us you know some kind of a cool way to approach it um, yeah. all right I'll just do a few more strokes here and then we'll call it good for tonight so thank you for joining in uh, it was nice to have uh, you know, some conversation in the chat here and yeah, so I, I definitely appreciate that and um, let me know if you're if you're painting you know you're interested in uh, learning or if you're just you know kind of watching for entertainment um, either that's fine of course um, if you are painting um, I would definitely uh, suggest painting along you know having your own projects and uh, making progress on those, you know, like, uh, I also love watching, uh, content on YouTube and, um, doing that while I work, um, but really, actually, the very best thing is to try things out right away, you know, and, uh, so, the way to do that is to have a canvas open as you're, as you're listening and, you know, try things right away, so, Thank you again for joining. I'm going to just go full screen here and I'll go control zero to fit it into the uh, fit it into the view. And um, so that's where we ended up tonight with this one. Again, there's something something about this one, you know, I'm just really taking my sweet time with it. Uh, but I'm okay with that. I I want to get it I want to arrive at the place um, that uh, that I kind of feel with this one. Whereas a lot of other works, you know, you, you just kind of jump in and you're um, uh, there are tools to to get you get you somewhere fast, and that's good. That's good for a certain thing. But again, you know, these Wednesday nights, I've mentioned this before. Like these, are, this is a time for me where I do um, the kind of thing that I don't normally do on a on a um, daily basis, like um, breaking away from the commercial stuff, breaking away from um, the uh, you know necessity to just be fast and get something out, um, and I'm just exploring what's interesting to me, uh, and so uh, I, I'm glad that that resonates with uh, with some people, um, and uh, I. I really shouldn't offer any kind of apology, but I, I will say it is different every time. You know, every time we're going to kind of explore something different, and that's this the nature of what this is. Um, so, again, thanks for joining tonight, and uh, remember um, to head on over to uh, ix-online.com to check out that. Um, and watch out soon for um, 
uh, the web website launch for Fantastic Tanks. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited about that. Uh, I'll cut it off there. All right. Have a great night, everybody.